In this video, we're going to introduce you to level effects, and these effects are a great way to non-destructively edit your clip art. Once we show you how they work, we're then going to take those level effects and use them to help create this coat of arms that you can see here in front of you. But before we get into that, let's have a look at how level effects work and where they're found. So we're going to come up to File and Close. So first, let's open an existing file. So let's go to Open an Existing File, and we're going to choose a level effect intros file. And let's hop over to the 3D view when the file loads. And you'll notice that at the top here, we've got our layers. We've got a clipping layer and a mirror mode layer. And we've got our levels at the top here, as well as over in the components uh, tree here, we've got our mirror mode and our clipping mode. Now, in this case, we're actually interested in the clipping mode first. So let's select that and highlight that. And that brings up our fish with our circle vector. Now, to access the uh, level clip effects, you can actually just right click on a level and you can choose clipping or mirror mode, and in this case, we're gonna look at clipping first. So if we just click on our fish and we move it around, so if we drag it around the workspace, you'll notice that nothing in particular happens uh, until I drag it off the workspace a little bit and you can see it gets clipped. But let's drag it back into the middle for the moment and we're gonna have a look at clipping this. So to do any sort of clipping, we need a 2D vector first. So let's select our circle vector, we'll come up to our clipping, and then we're gonna choose uh, with right mouse click, clipping, hit apply. And now what you notice is if I move the fish around, first click off uh, the circle vector, and if I move the fish around, you'll notice that it has now clipped it so that you can see the silhouette of the whole fish. But the only part of the fish is showing is the back end of it here, and not the face, because it has effectively clipped it uh, using that vector to clip away anything outside of that vector. So you can see here how it can create some really interesting effects because if you only want certain parts of the fish, you can achieve this using the clipping methodology here. Now, if I move the circle, so let's move it over here, for example, you notice the clipping doesn't take effect and that's because you need to update the location of where the clipping is taking effect. So if I right mouse click now on clipping and choose clipping update, you'll notice it now knows that the circle has moved because I've clicked update and now it has applied the clipping in its new location. It's also important to note that any tool pass you create will only be applied to the part of the fish that has not been clipped. So in this case, you can see the, the face and part of the body here. That would be the only part of the fish that would be tool path if you were to create tool path in this scenario because uh, the rest of the fish has been clipped. So even though you can see the silhouette here, this has all been clipped away. So this would not be uh, viable for use for a tool path. Now, what would happen if I were to try and create a vector boundary around this fish in its current state? Well, let's have a look. So let's go over to the design tab. And we're going to choose this option down here to create a vector boundary around selected components. Let's click on that. Now, while it might not be the most obvious right now, let's go back into our components tree and let's turn off our fish so we can see what happened when I click that button. And you'll notice there's a vector and it's only created it around the area in which the fish was clipped. This is really useful because if you want to set up a profile toolpath, this kind of vector comes in really, really handy. So you can see how it's quite a powerful tool and handy tool uh, to trace around your clipped vector so you only get the section that you want to profile around. Now, if we turn back on our fish, you can see how the vector goes around the fish as well. And uh, another good thing to take into account here is that the software will know if you have a composition with several different levels in it. And if one of them happens to be a clipping level, when you choose all the components, and the software will take into account or consider what has been clipped on those levels and will give you the resulting vector. So that's really good, again, for creating a profile uh, toolpath. And also, as a tip, if you have a level that has clipping on it, to make it nice and clear, because the symbol here doesn't change for this level, uh, or the icon, if we go to right click and rename, we can call this one dash or underscore clip. And so that way you know that that level has a clipping vector on it or a clipped effect on that particular level. So now that we've had a look at clipping, let's look at mirroring. So let's turn off our level for the fish for the moment. And we're just gonna minimize that, and we're gonna come up to our layers. We're gonna turn off this layer, turn on our mirror mode layer, make it active by double-clicking it, and we'll have a look at our mirror mode flourish. So you can see here, I've got the flourish on the worksheet now. And with that selected, we can go into mirror mode, but let's just tile our windows, because this will come in uh, to effect in just a moment. So with our flourish, what we can do is do several things with mirror mode. So if you go up to right mouse click, mirror mode, and we can choose left to right, right to left, top to bottom, bottom to top, top left quadrant, top right quadrant, bottom left quadrant, 
and bottom right quadrant. Now what the quadrants refer to are the quadrants here on the 2D view here, and it will mirror those. But let's go through these one by one. So let's go for mirror mode left to right. I notice what it's done is it's mirrored the composite model from left to right there. And so it's taken anything from this center line left and mirrored it to the right. Similarly, if we go over to mirror mode top to bottom, you'll notice it's taken everything from this center line here and mirrored it to the bottom. Now interestingly, you'll notice that the symbol or the icon for mirror mode changes depending on whether you go top to bottom or right to left. You'll notice it's got a horizontal line there to represent uh, top to bottom and it had a uh, vertical line for right to left. So if I just go to uh, left to right, for example, you'll see that the line has now changed there for it. Now if we look at something like mirroring the top left quadrant, what the software is doing is it's taken the top left quadrant and it's mirrored it to all the other quadrants. Similarly, if I look at doing it for the other modes, so if I go top right, and then we go for bottom left, and then we go for bottom right. And you notice the whole time, because I've got my model selected here, it's showing me the silhouette of the model, but giving me the actual new result of the composite model uh, using mirror mode. So you can see the original model and you can still see the uh, mirror mode uh, taking effect as well. Now, what if we do something like this? So if we do top left quadrant, and then we wanna actually create a vector boundary around our uh, composite model, what happens? So let's have a look. So let's click on create vector boundary around selected components. And you'll notice what it's done, if I just go back into components and turn off that component for the moment, is it's done it around the composite model that we've created using our mirror effects there. So you can see how powerful that really is. And if I move my model around, so I'm just going to delete the vector out for the moment, you'll notice that the type of effect I get will change dynamically depending on the mirror mode. I've got selected as well. So you can see how you can make some really interesting composite models uh, depending on how you've uh, set up your original model and how you orientate it within the software with the mirror mode. And of course we can come back up to mirror mode, we can right mouse click and we can actually turn off the mirror mode to no mirroring and that turns it off entirely. Now from here we can actually create some pretty interesting compositions using both of these effects. So let's have a look at that. So we can see here that I've got a uh, coat of arms file. So I'm going to be using uh, the mirroring effects here and the clipping effects here to uh, complete my coat of arms here. So you can see if I go over to my components tab, I've got several levels. So I've got my flourishes level, which is my flourish over here. And then I've got my center, which is my uh, banner, my helmet with the plume and my shield. And I've just built these up by placing them and giving them the shape height and base height that I was happy with. But let's have a look at the uh, mirroring effects here. So we're going to select our plume and we're going to come up to here and we're going to right mouse click and we're going to go to uh, mirror mode and we're going to choose the top left quadrant. So let's have a look at what that looks like. Now you'll notice what it's done is it's actually created a very uh, lovely effect for our coat of arms where it is mirrored the top left quadrant which is why I've got the 2D view open here. So this top left quadrant here and it's created a mirror copy of that around the other quadrants here. Uh, and it's placed it. And what we can actually do to further enhance that is we can dynamically move this and we can see how that changes. So if I left mouse click on the rotation handle here, if I change that, you can notice how we can get some really interesting effects while the mirror mode is set to the top left quadrant. Now, I'm actually quite happy with it being around here, but what I will do is I'll make another copy of this uh, flourish so I can maybe look at creating some other effects with it. So if I hold down control on the keyboard while clicking and dragging out this flourish, you can see how I can drag out another flourish. And because I've got the mirror mode set to the top left quadrant, we can see how we can make some interesting effects and how it dynamically changes that in the software to show us uh, what we're doing with this when we're actually bringing it in to our uh, worksheet. So you can see here I can make some really interesting looking designs depending on where I place this. And of course, if I move it around and move it up, I can then kind of drop it there. And you can see how that gives a lot more uh, detail and life to our coat of arms. Now, I'm actually quite happy with that. I think that looks really good. Now, 
Typically on a coat of arms, there's also some kind of detail added to the face of the shield. And what I'd like to do with this one is to add a little bit of a textured banner or a textured band uh, diagonal through uh, the shield. And so in order to do that, we're going to have to use a level effect called clipping that we talked about earlier in the video. But in order to do that first, we need to create a vector that we can use to create some sort of textured component. So what we're going to do first is we're going to go over to the uh, components tab here. We're going to right click on flourishes, insert a new level, and we're going to click on where it says level one, right mouse click, rename level. I'm going to call this one banner. And because we're using a clipping mode here, I'm going to put underscore clip. So I know this is a clipping level. Now, the next thing we're going to do here is create a vector outline of the top face of the shield here. And the easiest way to do that is to use this bitmap representation and use the bitmap trace tool. So just so we can see everything a little bit better, I'm just going to turn off the flourishes for the moment, select our shield, and we're going to go over to the design tab. And now we're going to go over to this tool here, which is a trace bitmap tool. Now, if you don't know how to use the trace bitmap tool, we do have a related video on how to use you know, the trace bitmap tool. But essentially what we're doing here is we're going to be looking at uh, selecting an object and tracing around a specific color on the object. Now, what I can do is I can select the individual colors here and they'll highlight where those colors are on uh, the design over here that's selected, you can see. But I can also just double click the area that I want. So in this case, I want this area of the shield. And I don't need to worry about the settings for the moment. I'm happy with these, so I can click preview. And you can see it's now got a vector around that area. I can hit apply, close that out, and now I've got my vector ready to go. But I'm just going to offset that just a little bit because I don't want to touch my banner too much. So if I go over to the offset tool over in the bottom left here, and we're going to go inwards and left by 0.1, and we're going to delete the original vector, click offset, and that's now offset that vector uh, inwards uh, by the 0.1 value there. So that's now looking good. I can close out of this form. So now what we need is a rectangle. So let's go to the draw rectangle tool. Let's grab that, and you can actually draw this in the 3D view as well as the 2D view. So I'll show you how to do it. I'm just going to freehand it for the moment. So I'm just going to draw a quick rectangle like so. Uh, that looks pretty good for the moment. I'm just going to let that go. And then I'm just going to come across and close out of this form. And now we've got our vector. Uh, we can move it into place now. We want to make it sure so it's in the middle. So you can hit F9 on the keyboard, and that'll make sure it's in the center of uh, our worksheet. And then what we can do is we can drag it down to where we need it. So in this case, I need it to be on my shield vector here. And then what I'm going to do is use the rotation handle here to drag this around and rotate it. So you can see, if you look, keep it on the top left here, you can see the uh, edge of the rectangle. I'm trying to keep it in line with the edge of the shield, the top edge of that shield there. And that looks, looks about right, because what I want to do is have the center point or the top left point of the shield vector here, so you can see it in the 2D view as well. I want it to be kind of central to the middle of uh, this rectangle, and it looks about right there. So what I'm now going to do is hold Shift, and you can use either the 2D view or the 3D view to uh, select your vectors. So well, let's select the uh, vector for our shield, and then we can left mouse click while holding Shift to select the vector for the rectangle, I'm going to use this tool here called Overlap. Now this will keep the overlap of the selected vector. So let's click on that and let's see what happens. And you notice it's kept the overlap because there was an overlapping section between the shield vector and the uh, banner or the rectangle vector here. And now we've got the overlapping section uh, trimmed away uh, or, or left from the trim. And so we can now use that to use with a clipping effect. So now what we're going to do is go back over to our clip art tab. Because what we're going to do now is we're going to have a look at adding in some clip art to uh, use for, as a texture for this section with our clipping effect. So while we're in the decorative part of the clip art tab, let's scroll down and there is a texture here called linen fold. Now if I double mouse click that, it brings it to the center of the software. And with that selected, I'm just going to use my arrow keys to bring that down so that the rectangle that we were just made or the shape that we just made on top of the shield uh, has this item in it completely encompassing it so uh, so that this is well and truly embedded within that rectangle and i'm going to size this down just a little bit as well uh, so what we'll do is we'll use transform handles over here i'm just going to left mouse click and size that down just a little bit that seems about right okay so let's go back over to our components uh, tab now and what we're going to do is we're going to turn off the center uh, level so we can see just our rectangle here 
and we're going to take a look at how we're going to use this with our clipping. So with our vector selected, we're going to come up to our clipping level. We're going to right mouse click it, go to clipping, click apply. And you'll notice what it's done is it's clipped away all of the uh, clip art around that vector and it's left just the clip art inside of that vector. So it's clipped away the outside of it. And if we turn back on our other levels, we can have a look at what that looks like in conjunction with our entire coat of arms. And that looks really, really nice. But you may notice that at the moment, the, the texture is a bit proud here of the actual material. So we need to have a look at adjusting that. So there's a couple of different ways we can do this. Well, we can just click on our component here and we could right mouse click it and we can choose to uh, edit it so we can go to the component here and we can go to properties or we could actually use the icons here to adjust it so we can actually uh, change the base height here we can change the shape height here I'm actually going to exaggerate the shape height but what I can actually do is if I enter in a value here for the shape height, I'll put in 0.125 to really exaggerate it and then what I'm going to do with the base height over here is I'm going to actually put in a minus value of 0.15. Click enter. And then what that will do is actually drop it in. You'll notice now that we've got a little bit of uh, a drop here for our component here. And what it's done is it's given me some room here. So when it comes to tooling, we have a nice, more pronounced effect uh, for this inner part here that we've just created. So it's not standing proud of the shield, but it's inside of it and it gives it a lovely pronounced effect uh, when we come to actually uh, machine this. So let's have a look at this top down now. Let's maximize our 3D view. And that brings us to the end of our demonstration how to use the clipping effects in the software. Now hopefully this video has been useful and you can see how powerful the level effects are uh, that are in the software and how you can easily design a composition that is symmetrical or it's a great way uh, to uh, use level clipping where you can non-destructively edit your clip art and you can use it in all sorts of creative and fun ways. So I highly encourage you to go uh, experiment with these effects and hopefully you can create some of your uh, own coats of arms or interesting effects in the software as well. And of course, we look forward to seeing you in the next video.